Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. Next thing we're going to talk about is using transitivity. Um, in particular, in this example, we're given some premises and we just want to know what would be a valid conclusion. And there's multiple possible valid conclusions. So um, it's not just one right answer, but we do have to make sure that we're you know, correct. So instead of using a truth table, what we're going to do is use the idea of transitivity. Remember, transitivity is if P implies Q and Q implies R, um, then that means that by a chain reaction, it must be the case that P implies R. There's actually, it's a very strange argument. It's not immediately even clear that this involves if-then statements. We're going to actually have to translate this into if-then statements so we can use transitivity. So here we go. Babies are illogical. Nobody is despised who can manage a crocodile. Illogical persons are despised. Very strange, right? These are the, th the facts that we're assuming to be true. These are the premises, and we're going to see what conclusion we could draw. So first, how could we rewrite babies are illogical as an if-then statement? Are we saying if um, someone is a baby, then they're an illogical person? Or are we saying if someone's an illogical person, then they're a baby? What is the implication here? Yeah, the implication is if they're a baby, then they're illogical. Oh, I forgot. I'm going to let P represent being a baby, Q represent being logical, R represent you can manage a crocodile, and S be you're despised. This covers babies, illogical, um, despised, ability to manage a crocodile, um, despised and illogical. All right, so using that and using the idea that babies are illogical means the same thing as if you're a baby, then you're illogical. I could write that first premise as P implies not Q. Now, how could I write Nobody is despised who can manage a crocodile. How can I write that as an if-then statement? Nobody is despised who can manage a crocodile. Is that saying that um, if you're not despised, then you can manage a crocodile? Or if you can manage a crocodile, then you're not despised? That's right. If you can manage a crocodile, then you're not despised. If you can manage a crocodile, then you're not despised. Excellent. So how would we write that in symbolic form? Very good. R is you can manage a crocodile. So if R, then you're not despised would be the negation of you are despised. So R implies not S. Excellent. All right, let's look at the third premise. Illogical persons are despised. What if-then statement is that one implying? Is it saying if you're not logical, then you're despised? Or if you're despised, then you're not logical? Yeah, if you're not logical, then you're despised, which would be negation of Q, negation of logical, implies S implies that you're despised. We now have the three statements written in a symbolic form. P implies not Q, R implies not S, not Q implies S. And what we're looking to do is to draw a conclusion. And I already told you that the way that a valid conclusion, um, I already told you that the trick we're going to use is transitivity a chain reaction. All right, so immediately from these three statements, two of them can be connected using a chain reaction. Let's call them statements A, B, and C. Which two of these, that's supposed to be a B, <laughs> which two of these can be connected using a chain reaction? That's right, A and C can. So we can say um, P implies not Q, but we also know from C that not Q implies S, so that implies S. So the chain reaction is that if P happens, then S happens. So that means that P implies S is a valid conclusion. It only uses two of the premises, but that's okay. We didn't say you had to use all of them. So P implies S is one possible conclusion, and what would that be in words? What valid conclusion would that be in words? Very good. If you're a baby, then you're despised. If you're a baby, 
then you're despised. But that's not the only possible conclusion. It kind of looks like it because at first glance, you only see two statements that um, one of them ends with the same uh, component that the other one begins. But there's yet another trick we have up our sleeve, which is the contrapositive. So what we're going to do is, oops, here we go. These were the three premises that we found on the previous slide. I want to remind you that the contrapositive is always equivalent to the original statement. So the contrapositive is where you take the original conditional and you both change the order and negate everything. The negation, sorry, the contrapositive rather of P implies not Q would be Q implies not P. These are logically equivalent, these two statements. So if I know that P implies not Q, I also know that Q implies not P. All right, how about what's the contrapositive of R implies not S? S implies not R. Very good. You changed both the order and the sign. S implies not R. And what's the uh, contrapositive of not Q implies S? Okay, you have to change the order and the sign. So the S is going to go on the left, the Q is going to go on the right, the S is going to become a negative, and the Q is going to become a positive. That's okay. Good. It's good to try because then you know it, if you need to adjust. All right, so really we have six different statements that we know. It's not just the three that we wrote down to begin with. So are there any other chain reactions that we could make that would use all three of the facts, one version or the other of the facts, either the original or the contrapositive? I want to use all three. Can we make a chain reaction for all three? So C and A, we, we could use this and this, that's true. But then could we add B into it some way? If this is A and this is B and this is C. I want to use one version of each. There is a way. There is a way. So we could go from A to C. C ends with S. And then what starts with S? The contrapositive version of B starts with S, right? So we actually could basically change B, rewriting B as um, S implies not R. We have A and then C and then the contrapositive of B creates a chain reaction. P implies not Q, which implies S, which implies not R. So a big giant chain reaction would be give us the valid conclusion that P implies not R. Using, by turning B around, we using the contrapositive, we actually are able to use all three and come to a valid conclusion. That conclusion is if you are a baby, then you cannot manage a crocodile, <laughs> which is crazy, right? It's a very strange statement. But we're not looking, <laughs> we're not looking for whether the statement's true or false, just if it's if the argument is valid or invalid. And we know by transitivity that this is a valid conclusion to the argument we were given. <laughs> I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.